What are you seeing on your, oh, the shiny is live. There we go. Meeting is now on Facebook. Still not seeing anything my side. Okay, I think you need to share it. Okay, great. Share. We'll give it a couple of seconds. Mm -hmm. You let me know when I can share it to my page. You can share it now. Okay, that's so it. I'll tell you if it's coming up on your page as well. It's amazing how much prep goes into just an hour, you know. Uh, Said something went wrong. Okay. It's not going to my page, so. I'm just going to put your link on mine. Okay. Hello, Lerato and Ishara. Welcome. Tell me when you're okay there, Angelique. I've just put your Facebook page link as mine on mine. Okay, thank you so much. So then it and will be a technical. Um... Great. Okay, fabulous. Okay, great. <laughs> Good evening and hello, hello to our Facebook family. We're so excited to have you join us this Friday afternoon. Um, and on behalf of uh, Richard Maestri, the co-founder of Succeed and myself, we'd really, really like to welcome you um, and like to invite and welcome um, Angelique Detoy, who I'm going to introduce properly soon. Uh, but welcome, Angelique. Thanks so much. Uh, <laughs> so, um, just a little bit about Succeed as we start the series. Um, it being Women, Women's Month, we wanted to plant seeds of hope. And um, we started Succeed as a way to restore dignity to every person um, because we believe the solution to many of the world's problems lies with individuals. It lies as seeds in individuals. And what we wanted to do was tap into those seeds. We wanted to tap into those seeds through teaching, and through learning, and the word that comes up is almost rabbi. And there, there are four streams that succeeds, Succeed works on. And the first is uh, the agricultural piece where we want to teach people how to uh, farm in, the, in whatever capacity they have, but to grow their own food so that, they, so that they can feed their families. We want to teach basic business and entrepreneurial skills to these individuals as well, so that they can become self-sufficient. Um, at the moment, we are working on an accreditation on um, an agricultural and entrepreneurial piece. 
also we want to tackle the education space and that's really vast but our desire and our dream is to take things like coding as, as an example out of the private sector space and out of the elitist space into the vast community. I think one of the heartbeats of Succeed is that we want to be an open space, an open heaven, an open area where people can access and um, just be comfortable to, to be themselves and to grow um, into a far more sustainable way of living, a way that is responsible to both the earth as well as to people. So on that note, Succeed welcomes and celebrates women this month. We have many seeds of hope that we will be planting along the way. But without any further ado, I'd like to introduce to you Angelique Titoy, who's joining us from Italy tonight. Um, and Angelique, uh, well, firstly, Angelique is a dear friend, a mentor, a wise, wise woman that I have gone through since 2007 when we first met and our paths crossed. And I must say from the day that I met Angelique, my life has never been the same. She walks her talk. She's an amazing human being. Um, not only ha has she written five books, but she writes, she speaks, she podcasts. I would like to say that she is the queen of hope. And Angelique walks her talk. She walks her talk. So welcome Angelique, 30 years in direct selling. Um, she's built a business and had an outstanding marriage for 25 years and a family. So this is a woman that, that I admire greatly uh, and that I love dearly. So welcome, Angelique, to succeed. Thank you so much, Nishani. And I will never forget the day that I met you in a very large banking corporation in uh, Johannesburg. And the moment I set my eyes on you, I looked at you and saw potential. And we have walked a journey together. And I want to say to you today that everything you've accomplished and everything that you've achieved, I am so very proud of you. And I really hope that on a platform like this, you will share with your viewers and mine your story and your journey. Because when I shared your page to my page um, for tonight's recording, I said she is one dynamic woman. And that's really what you are. If ever I've seen resilience in a woman, if ever I've seen a woman take uh, something that somebody has shared with her, knowledge, and apply it to her life and see it through, it's you. And I'm extraordinarily proud of you. I just, I think oh. you're one incredible woman and you have my greatest admiration. Thank you, Angelique. So tell us a little bit about yourself and about your journey. Well, I guess your uh, listeners must be wondering what on earth I am doing in Italy. And uh, I, well, I keep saying somebody's got to do it. So <laughs> it might as well be me. And that's one of my life mottos, by the way. If somebody's got to have it or do it, it might as well be me. Um, and I think that comes from a, a life experience of growing up with, you know, not having much and wondering how on earth uh, these people got to do what they got to do, got to live where they got to live. How did they get educated? And of course, um, I could fall into none of those categories as a, um, you know, as a young woman. And so it's just been a remarkable journey for me to find myself here in Italy, um, which was a place that we came to probably for about the past 16 years because as a family, we loved skiing and uh, just fell in love with this particular region. And uh, we just over dinner one night, just said to each other, my husband and I, wouldn't it be wonderful if we had the opportunity to, to be in Italy and, you know, never ever discount the power of your dreams. And that's mm. why your message tonight is so powerful about seeds of hope, because as long as there is hope, you can work towards anything. And so little did we know that that discussion around, wouldn't it be lovely to have a little place in Italy, which was very tongue in cheek, by the way, mm. um, then became a, a realization. And so, you know, from a journey as a, as a young child of having gone to 13 different schools from grade one to standard six, to find myself in the position that I am today. Um, I love the way that you said the queen of hope because uh, it says to me and 
prayerfully says to everybody else that there is always hope to reach your dreams. There's always hope uh, to reach your vision. And the journey may not always be easy as you well know that journey is not easy, but it's doable and with God's grace and bunches of God's grace, it's amazing what he allows us to experience in this journey of hope. And so, um, yes, I do have the privilege of working from Italy right now. And of course, it's just highly beneficial that everything is online. And so my South African network is keeping me very, very busy, as well as being connected with some, some wonderful global organizations. Yes, uh, it seems you're virtually everywhere. <laughs> you're virtually <laughs> everywhere because you pop up at podcasts, you pop up in every virtual space. Um, Angelique, can you tell me uh, a little bit about, um, you know, how you set up this, this 30 year old and you're very modest because it's, a, it's quite a dynamic, uh, profitable business. Tell us a little bit about that and, and how you did that while setting up family and marriage. Yes, well, you know, um, Nishani, it's a very fascinating thing because the need in our lives often drives the solution. Mm. But we don't like to go through the pain of the process. And because I grew up wondering what on earth I was going to do with my life, and I'm saying it very glibly now, you've read my books, you know the journey. Um, but, you know, I wondered what am I going to do with my life? I have no education. I have no skills. How am I going to find a job? Until somebody introduced me to the wonderful world of direct selling, which is a consultant to client business, which meant I didn't need to go in with any experience because I would have a sponsor who would teach me. And a lovely woman said to me, you don't need any experience. You just need lots and lots of enthusiasm and a willingness to learn. And of course, the need in my life was very great. And so I can't tell you what it was like to earn my first earning from that little home-based business. And you see, what we don't know without the privilege of hindsight is if we'll follow the clues in our life, they give us the cue to move on to the next place. And so I just gave it my all. I took every bit of advice that everybody could give me in the wonderful world of direct selling. Uh, I was terrified to speak to people. So I didn't know how I was going to, to do what they were asking me to do. And isn't it amazing that today I find myself as a speaker, but I mean, I wouldn't say boo to a goose. But I started to realize some very key learnings. And that is what is what business for me is all about. And, you know, it seems a cliche statement, but it's my truth. And that is that people don't care how much you know until they know how much you care. And that's what the world of direct selling opened to me. And then many years later, I met my husband in a direct selling. And it was just a perfect match. It was a perfect match in career. It was a perfect match in industry. It was a perfect match in marriage. And, uh, and one of the reasons I'm, I'm here is because that man that was so instrumental in my life and, and just brought me face to face, I guess, with so many of my fears and was one of the instrumental, beautiful human beings in my life that showed me that anything was possible and uh, I just had to put fear away and climb on top of it and use it as a ladder. And yeah. it would be something that, you know, I could accomplish. And, uh, you know, I do believe that we're standing on the shoulders of giants, on the shoulders of people who really have cared enough to bend down low enough to allow us to climb on their shoulders to get to where it is that we desire to be. And my wonderful husband was one of those people. But in December 2019, very unexpectedly, with no signs of ill health, nothing to give us any indication that, you know, anything was wrong, he literally dropped down and on the 31st of December passed away at a very young age of 64. And I say young because he was so super fit. And he was so healthy and he was so dynamic and a visionary and a leader and a powerful businessman. And it was just an absolute shock to oh. every single one of us. Uh, I believe the world lost a legend that day, but gained an enormous legacy. 
And so together we we built some very dynamic businesses in our in our years together. And he taught me a lot. And I'm very grateful. Mm. It was really sad to hear about Ernest uh, Angelique. It was really such a, such sad news. Um, but tell us tell us about the year prior to that and what happened. What was so significant? Because I watched you on Facebook and it looks like you and Ernest were sucking the marrow out of life in that year, absolutely everywhere. And I wondered where are these two getting the energy? Um, but tell us, tell me what happened. At the beginning of that year. To me, that's just the amazingness of God and the beauty of God in one's life. And I have been deeply close to the Lord for 35 years of my life. And when I say deeply, as in deep, intimate, close, day-to-day -day walking relationship with him. And when we have our ear very close to his chest, we can hear what it is that he is oh. And it's only with the privilege of hindsight that I look back now and I could not understand why a woman like me who had a really busy career as an author, as a speaker, as a businesswoman, traveling the world, full diary, connecting with family across the world, um, you know, great friendships, and oh. in the beginning of 2019, I just felt the prompting to take a sabbatical. And I was in two minds about it because half of me was saying, I'm nowhere near ready to put my feet up and retire because I don't believe in retirement. And, and the other half of me saying, well, you know, there's got to be more to this. There's got to be a purpose to this. Oh. And I said to Ernest, I'm actually going to take a sabbatical. And I can tell you, I was like a naughty child because I fought it. In the beginning, it was really difficult. You know, you want to scratch around and see what's happening in yes. your, your world of work. And it took me quite a while to let go. You know, we, we are pretty significant women uh, in, the, in this busy life that we lead. And, and yet, it was so glorious because Ernest and I spent every single day day together we traveled mm. we did things that we just often didn't have time for while you're building a business we connected in so many wonderful ways we saw so many parts of the world we did yes. things we skied we hiked we we just did glorious things and and of course I kept writing but to me that's not work that's you know part of my passion and part of my purpose um, but isn't it just so true, Nishani, if we will but listen and obey mm. in any way, because it was that year that gave us such a harvest, because yeah. I, nor Ernest, knew what was coming at the end of that year. And it was a year of great connectedness and great growth together. Um, but for a time such as this, mm. no no regrets. I miss him every single moment, but no regrets. And mm. so God's joy is our strength. And of course, we believe in eternity. We believe in resurrection life. And so I'm actually the only one, of course, my children are, but I am the only one that's uh, in pain. He is in glory and having a wonderful time. So uh, yeah, it's uh, life is an interesting journey and, and so much to learn. From it. Yeah, yeah. And having lost your sweetheart so recently, how have you managed to walk your talk? How have you managed to stay in such a wholehearted and joyful place? Um, you know, while still being authentic about, about your grieving. I mean, it's just incredible to see you being a purveyor of hope in, in such a time as this when the world is in absolute chaos. Isn't Stand it? as a beacon of light, yes. Yeah, thank you. Um, thank you, Nishani. You know, I, I would be dishonest if I said to you that I haven't had days, weeks sometimes, and particularly through lockdown here in Italy, um, I was going close to 100 days where I did not have human touch. Mm. And uh, 
from, from a very affectionate marriage uh, and a very affirmative marriage, that for me was very difficult. Um, but in it all, if we don't have hope lighting up our way, and we don't believe that there is a future and a hope, which is a promise of God, you can yeah. down spiral very, very quickly. And so one of my tests as an author and one of my tests as a speaker is to keep asking myself, Angelique, are you living what you are speaking? And mm -hmm. so when I find myself in the gloomies, and that's not to say we're not allowed to have the gloomies, but when I find myself there, I say to myself, what are you telling everybody else to do? And somebody said to me very sweetly, I think it's time for you to go and read your own books again, because I was kind of offloading how I was feeling. So I can tell you that on my down days, I had some very bad days. Um, and yet on my good days, by the grace of God, he has carried me. And the one thing I will say is, he is your shelter. He is your refuge. He is your place to go to where there, no, when there's just nowhere else to go. And so I kept, you know, inspiring myself by continuing writing, by starting to podcast, by doing things that actually fed me. I get yeah. so much feedback on my podcast. They're, they're just ramping up actually every single week. And much of the, the feedback is, you know, I feel so inspired. Thank you for this. And I, I say to them, you know, they say to me, how do you do it? And I say, well, because I'm actually speaking to myself first. I'm encouraging yes. myself first. And, and I really believe that, as you so eloquently put it, as a purveyor of hope, you've got to be able to see it on in yourself and, and live it, wear it as a mm. clip on yourself mm. before mm. you can start it. Otherwise, we're just speaking theory. Yes. And theory doesn't carry life. The yeah. spirit carries life. And the yeah. spirit is within you, alive. Yeah. And so it's in him that I dig deep and and I encourage myself and therefore I encourage others. So hope is so important. And that's why I love yeah. your enterprise, Seeds of Hope, because it says yeah. to me that it doesn't matter how tiny the seed is, the hope it's is there. there. Yeah. And with the right watering, the right yes. nurturing, the right growth, that beautiful seed can become a mighty oak. So yes. seeds of hope is wonderful. Yeah. And it so ties in with, 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 with our vision for, for succeed. It's because we believe every individual has that seed in them, that God-given seed that just needs to be tapped on. Mm. You know, I, I will never forget when I... Um, I was, I was your guest at the Michelangelo um, back in 2007 at, and at, at a very pivotal time in my life. Um, and one of the things that you said, well, there were two things. You said your, rev your, your gifting is the avenue for your revenue. And you said something that completely shifted my paradigms from that moment. You said, you have the gift of choice and you speak about it widely in all of your books as a theme. Can you tell us what choice means to you? And, and why do you say we have a choice? Is it because some of us think we don't have a choice? What is it about choice? I think, the, you know, it, whenever we want to find a solution to something, we need to go to the root of it. And the root of choice for me is that God took an enormous risk when he created humankind with the free will. Yeah. The free will means that we have the will to even choose to be against God and not choose his way of life. He clearly says that he lays before us life and death mm. and is unequivocally, therefore you choose, mm. which clearly puts it in our realm of responsibility. Yes. It takes us out of blame. It takes us out of, well, you know, I wish my father had have been different. I, I, I should have had an education. It's my fault that, or it's somebody else's fault that I, you know, I can't do this. And I blame my parents for this, or I blame my husband for that, which completely absolves you of your yes. responsibility. 
Choice, on the other hand, is incredibly powerful because choice says that I can navigate my future by the choices that I make. And I believe it's a beautiful blend between knowing God in his sovereignty, but understanding your human responsibility. And the yeah. two that come together makes a very, very powerful present and a very powerful future. So funnily enough, just on today's podcast, I talk very much about the word choice, because if you break up the word choice, it is choosing how our individual circumstances evolve. And that's up to you. And that's up to me. And you'll know that the very phrase that launched uh, my speaking business was you win or you lose by the way that you Choose. Choose. <laughs> to this day, and I've been alive for many decades, for whatever reason, however you wish to place it, that statement will forever be true. Whatever facet of your life, whatever area of your life, you win or you lose by the way that you choose. And the moment you stop choosing, you hand over your power to somebody else. And then they're designing your life and they may take you to places that you don't desire to be. And you well know that in your own story. Yes, yes, I do. I do. That's such powerful words. You know, you win or lose by the way that you choose. And, um, and it, does, it does take the responsibility back. But it also, it moves one out of the victim mode into the creator mode of one's life, right? And you've had to do that um, quite well and and I mean you speak very openly about sort of not having a full high school education and yet you've authored five books um how did you push past all of that I don't know you know maybe the small talk maybe the, maybe the fact that I'm not good enough for this or who, what right do I have to be doing this um how did you push past all of that to do something so excellently and so beautifully and five books is no small feat, plus the podcast. Thanks, Nishani. You know, um, I have to give credit where credit is due. I've had very significant mentors in my life. I've had women who cared so much about me that they spent time building into my life. I've had people that have influenced my life in so many ways that they gave me hope to move on. And to try something, even if I did it terrified, I, I tried it. But I believe it was because of the deficit in my life of no education that I probably worked a lot harder than people who perhaps, you know, have it all going for them, so to speak. Yeah. And so uh, I used to read the dictionary to enlarge my vocab. I, I used to read and read and read till I could read no more because I needed oh. to and how it all fitted together. And um, I can't tell you how much I deliberated over book number one, Standing Tall in a Falling World, and it's still well, a <laughs> Well, that's the original copy, so that is just a original <laughs> copy. by <laughs> Goodness me. I think it has been reprinted since that jacket. Probably... Yes all times so I am so impressed that it's still all together and it's just oh, it's still all together it's still one of my favorites though it's still one of my favorites and it's it's one of my go-to reference books quite often yeah. yeah and funny you should say that I so often refer to that book because I wrote that book in the crucible of my life and uh, many of the things that I wrote about I was living through and and mm. for one of the greatest authentic tests of an author is, yeah. you know, are you able to live through what you write about? And I've got to tell you, all five of my books have presented me with some very interesting things in life. And yes. uh, I said to a friend of mine the other day, I said, I think the next book I'm going to write is about fairy tales because... <laughs> I have written deep truths in my books and my goodness, I have been tested on those truths. Um, so I'm very excited about another project that I've got coming up, which is a series of eBooks. Mm. 
which is about women through the centuries. And uh, it's going to be a game changer because we as women can learn so much. And I'm thinking of one particular woman, I'm not going to give it away right now, um, that is very powerful in the Bible, but her wisdom for today is what we need. And so I, I made it my business, Nishani, uh, because I felt that I had a gifting as a writer, as a little girl, I would spend hours just writing and writing. But yeah. of course, the biggest battle of my life came with the voice in my head that said, how can you write? Yes. You don't even have a standard six education. I mean, you know, I don't even think I passed the last final exams of standard six because we moved so many times, which I think is grade eight today. So that's going back some. But uh, I think when you want something enough, you've got to commit to yourself enough yeah. to say it's it's worth pushing through for. And and that for me is is resilience. And resilience is linked with hope. You've got yeah. to be resilient if you want to have that final harvest that hope can give you. And mm. so I need to stop having hope for, for things I haven't done yet, for things I, I haven't uh, achieved that are still on my vision board. Um, I'm a great believer in a vision board, by the way. Great. You know, in the, in, in the book, um, Standing Tall in a Falling World, you speak about um, wishing not being a strategy. And you speak about that, and, and I can hear that, you know, wishing, wish. And so what makes um, vision and strategy so important? I mean, you know, sometimes the word strategy seems so airy-fairy. I, I almost want to say, what does that mean tangibly for, for, the, for a person wanting to follow their dreams, wanting to build, uh, build on something, anything? Let me start with the wishing first and just say that, you know, it's very sad for me when you speak to somebody who has a dream. Yeah. And I wish things were different because if things were different, then I would have the opportunity. That's putting yeah. the cart before the horse. Things are not going to be different until you have a strategy. And mm. what is a strategy? Pure and simple, a strategy is a method of getting to where you want to go. And only you know the method that works for you. Going back to writing, I didn't consider myself brilliant in grammar or anything else, but yeah. I made it my business because I needed a method to produce a book. Now, I could have wished to have been an author 30 years yeah. ago, and I could still be wishing that today. And how many people have you met that are talking about a dream that yeah. they've for decades and they still haven't acted on it. And that is why we've got to turn that wishing into a method. If the mm -hmm. desire is there, it's been put there for a reason. I don't desire to be a medical doctor. There is nothing in my framework, nothing in my DNA. I admire them. I think they're incredible, but that's not part of who I am. So I've got to, first of all, find out what is my gift set? What makes me tick? What makes me want to do something so badly that I'll push through anything to get there? That is going to take me beyond wishing. You mm -hmm. look at entrepreneurs, they have brilliant ideas. Yes. And they, they produce these ideas in their mind. So that's their wish space. But very, very few put it into a method connecting with the right people, taking time to learn from others, asking the right questions, looking for funding, looking at collaboration. How can yeah. somebody work with this on me, uh, with me? And so it's really about how serious are you about what it is that you want? Because you can wish to be thinner, you can wish to be married, you can wish that you were not married, you can wish all of those things, but nothing is going to change until you take action and the mm. action is the strategy it's putting the method in place does it all come together all at once absolutely not i had a lot of resistance with my first book but yeah. you have to keep the vision in mind and the one thing i'll say about vision is the vision may seem impossible but it's keeping hope despite the reality of the present 
And mm. boy, we need to hear that in our world today. We've got to keep our hope alive, despite the reality of the present situation. I mean, we're hearing that people are losing jobs, businesses are closing. What a perfect opportunity to turn our wish lists into strategy. Wow. Wow, that's just, that's so profound. And what's key to keeping hope alive? What is key? I'm a great believer, Nishani, in generosity and abundance. Oh. I believe what keeps hope alive is an abundant mindset. Yes. You, if you understand that I have lived on both sides of the fence, I have lived in want, I have lived in lack, I've lived in great need, not just of education, of food, of yeah. clothes, of being free from fear, of uh, lacking confidence, yeah. of being shy, of being an introvert. I, I faced all of those things. The, the negative talk in my mind was so limiting and so self-defeating mm. that one of my strategies for life, and particularly as I got to understand what God said about abundance, was if I don't get an abundant mindset, I'm never going to be able to achieve the things that I see in my vision that I see in my future. So what keeps hope alive for me even now, and it's hard to say the word, but even as a widow, is, is what does abundance look like to you? And to me, abundance looks like doing the things I love to do, treasuring the things I love to treasure, having the freedom yeah. to be able to do the things that I can, uh, being able to, to create my days the way that works for me and not against me. That's what keeps hope alive. You see, if we've got to depend on governments, on education, on handouts, on, and I'm not saying that any of those things aren't necessary in some of the seasons in our lives. I've had many hands up, handouts, thank mm -hmm. God. Yeah. But how do we make the shift to what was to what should be? Yes. The, the key, the absolute key is generosity. Because it works like this, Nishani. If I hold on to what I've got, that is all I've got. But if I share what I've got, like you said I shared with you in 2007, look at the reward I've got from your life. Look at the reaping yes. I've been able to, to glean from the joy of seeing what has happened in your life. And I know your story intimately. Yeah. So that is the abundance mindset of giving so that we receive. I have made up my mind many, many, many years ago to live with open hands, an open heart, and an open mind. God spoke to my heart one day, and he said, I know I can trust you. What yeah. I can trust you with, what I can give to you, if it will go through you, I will give you more. Mm. That is a great key. That is why I believe giving turns our lives around. And I wrote about that in my book, Turn It Around. Yes. Generosity is for me, not one of the keys. It is the key for abundance. Wow. Not only abundance in what we can get, but abundant living. Mm. I look at things and I say, well, you know what? If somebody has got to have it, it might as well be me. So what have I got to do to get it? And the more you give, God has this incredible way of giving yeah. back. I'm not just talking about giving money. I'm talking yes. about giving of your time, your treasures, your talents, your, yes. your love of, of your wealth of knowledge or skill or whatever it is that somebody needs you know sometimes somebody just needs a smile yes somebody just needs to to be told that you love them yeah Living and you know in, mm, mm. and in, in, in the almost well over over a decade now of having known you and having um 
pad you, um, you know, just, just a phone call or a WhatsApp message away. Um, Angelique, I must say over these years, I'm not sure how you do it, but every time I send you a message or want to connect or have a question for you, you find the time to answer it. You know, you find the time, you find that there's never an, I have never heard the words, I'm too busy. Even when I need a refill on my facial tissue oil, you're able to connect me with somebody who can help me. And I, and I just think, how on earth does she do that? How on earth are you that expansive and, and have this ability to just touch so many lives and invest in so many lives, even for, for, for small things? Again, I reflect on what people have done for me. Yeah. If people didn't have time for me, Nishani, I would not be here today. I know that at 21, if someone didn't have the time for me, I might not be alive today. Yeah. The fact that a woman took time out of her day to reach into my life, it turned my life around. And I made a vow to God. And I said, and I was young. I never knew what my future was going to be. I said to God, I will never overlook a woman in her time of need. And, you know, I'm not God, so I can't do everything, but I can connect yeah. with other people. I can, I'm a networker. That's what I do. So if somebody comes to me with a need and it's out of my realm. I try and connect them with somebody else. That's the power of networking. That's the power of collaboration. And if we think about it, Jesus was the most powerful networker. He started with 12 men. There are billions that have gone through the centuries after those 12 men. Imagine if Jesus said, sorry, blind man, I don't have time for you today. Sorry, Zacchaeus up the tree. I, I'm not seeing you today. Where would we all be so i often say to people if you can't get hold of me at least leave a message i may not be able to get back to you right away but for sure i'll get back to you one way or another whether it's an email a call a whatsapp but i will get back to you because i know how i value the people in my life that have got back to me and i'll never forget it Thank you so much. That's quite powerful. You know, in your book, you have an entire chapter um, dedicated to networking. And I must say many of us as people, and especially women, um, you know, we want to make an emotional investment first before we can ask for something or speak about or ask for support. Um, and sometimes we have a barrier to just the word networking. It's quite intimidating to think, oh, I'm going to work the room. And, you know, there's so many cliches out there that make it so like, Stand offish, but you say that networking is God's plan. And um, tell us a little bit about, you know, how do we overcome this, this almost this barrier that we could have within us? You know, you you are you've started the the direct networking business, built it up. Um, I mean, how? I think the answer is not going to be quite what you expect. Let's hear. <laughs> I believe the power to successful networking is to first learn to receive. So if we can't receive somebody's approach to us, we're not going to be able to network with them. And I, I really believe that it links to generosity, living with an open heart, open hands and open mind. Because even if you go to a networking event, you've got to be able to receive the people that are coming to you before you can network with them. So for me, networking is about giving and receiving. You know, God's economy is very different to the world's economy. The world yes. looks at buying and selling. And of course, we need to be profitable. And of course, we need to run businesses. We, we, we know that. But God's kingdom is about giving and receiving. But do you know that you cannot give until you first received? And if we can understand that 
in the power of networking. That when somebody approaches us in the business world or somebody approaches us at an event, that our mindset should be, let me receive first before I try and give. Because what is the first thing that we do at a networking event? I'm so and so, this is what I do. Da, da, da. Here's my card and here's my card and off we go. Exactly. And so what have we done? We've just given, 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 given in the wrong sense instead yes. of receiving. So hi, who are you? Tell me what you do. What brings you here? What organization are you with? You know, I learned a lesson from Dale Carnegie. He said, if you let the other person do all of the talking, they'll walk away and say, that person was one of the greatest people I've ever met, yet you're the one that hasn't said a word. All you've done mm -hmm. Take an interest in the person by asking questions. But you see, to ask questions, you've got to be of the mind that first wants to receive. Yeah. So it's about caring for the individual first. Absolutely. You know, I love Richard Branson's phrase. He says, I take care of my people. My people take care of my clients. The prophet mm. take care of themselves. And mm. I personally, that's why we saw success to the levels that we did in our decades of business together, because we first yeah. cared for the people. Yeah. We let them know that they could receive. Yeah, that's wonderful, Angelique. I want to I want to share with, with you a little bit about um, about this. Wonderful. About this. Because that's your yeah. is that yes. Your, yes, tell us, tell us. So this is this is this is this is what we're excited about this Women's Month. It's something very passionate about, and it's something that's very close to my heart. It's not something that I. It's not just a product. Um, last year, I spent two weeks in a very rural Eastern Cape, working there. I, um, uh, you know, I work with the women and children specifically in the area of uh, violence and sexual abuse and sexual exploitation. And so I went into an immersion piece of work and lived in the community and worked in the community of the Eastern Cape. Um, it was, a, you know, you, you cannot go there and live with the women um, without, without being impacted, without seeing the plight of these women and girls. You know, to get to a shop almost took us two hours and it would be a half a day's walk for them. There's no running water. Um, no electricity uh, in most of the places and yet they have something called corporate farming but many of the girls are now not being able to go to school they also having because they don't have simple thing like sanitary pads uh, are not able to go um, to school they, they, they then become um, infected with many illnesses and that for me just broke my heart, heart Angelique it broke broke my heart um, and so when I came back, you know, as God does, you have a dream and he connects you with the right people. I was connected uh, then uh, through Richard and, um, and uh, Patrick, and we met a gynecologist who actually studied there, and she had endorsed this product as well. This, pro this is also completely green, so it's very responsible to the earth, 100% cotton. It is not a poor girl's pad. It was featured in the Vogue magazine. And that's something I picked up from you. You know, one of the things you said, if you do anything, do it once and do it excellently, else don't do it. Mm. You know, that I learned from you, Angelique. And so one of the things that I want to do is to try and get this into every girl's hand. One of the saddest parts about living in South Africa is the fact that a woman has a choice between buying sanitary towels and being buying a loaf of bread. And I think that in itself is a violent choice. It's, it's a violent act against women if she has to make that choice, you know. So if you'd like to get, get in touch with our project, um, please just WhatsApp me, get in touch, inbox me, like our Succeed page. There's contact information there. I'd really, really, really love for you to partner with me. And as Angelique was saying, there is abundance. In, um, in God's way of doing things and God's economy. Um, so yeah, if you feel it in your heart to get involved, please do so. You know, Nishani, uh, I remembered when you shared with me uh, this vision that you had, it stunned me. It was just a shock to me when yeah. you said 
me that some of these women were using mealy leaves yes. as, as sanitary pads. And, you know, how can we not but have compassion yes. and say, what can we do to make a difference? And, you know, that's the power of networking. And, and I look at the joy in you, uh, the fact that you're serving because you do have a service heart. And I pray that this thing goes far and wide because it's meeting such a need in South Africa. Um, how do you pronounce the name? It's Rebel. 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 Yeah. Uh, Rebel. Well, Rebel needs to, to get into the hands of so many women in, in South Africa because, you know, that's really putting strategy to networking, isn't it? And that's the power of collaboration because one is too small a number for great success. You've got yeah. the vision with that, but you need people to run yeah. with. Uh, to really get it out there. And I really trust that they rally to that because it's been giving that, I mean, your whole face came alive, you know, it was just great joy in sharing something that, that you can do for the community. And going back to your seeds of hope, in, in these times where we are in very, very narrow straits at the moment, yes. the world of um, South Africa, I know, is, is going through its its trials, yeah. uh, much like Italy went through at the peak of, of COVID. Um, yeah. But what you realize is people have got to band together. We've got to draw together like we've never drawn together before. And we've got to, you know, link arms with each other and have each other's backs because there are many, many people who are depending on us to arise and be everything that we were created to be. And so, you know, yeah. you come to the circle with this beautiful project of yours. Thank you. I've just had somebody who's watching the show, uh, Kogi Reddy, say to me, Nishani, I'm watching and I'm really enjoying it. And I'd like to donate a thousand rand to the show, uh, to the project. So thank you so much. Thanks, Kogi. I'm so excited for that, uh, for that uh, seed that you're planting tonight. I'm really, really excited. Thank you. Thank you. And um, Angelique, um, we're coming to a close and we're in, in the last 10 minutes of this, uh, of this time. And I'd like to ask you if there's anything that you'd like to sow into my life and to Richard's life as we start this vision, um, what would it be? What would it be? Is there any wisdom you have for us? And I'm sure many people who are watching are sitting on those seeds, are sitting on dreams. Mm -hmm. So... You tell me, what is it that you want, would like to sow into our, our hearts? You're a great prophet and a great mentor. Um, so, yeah, the floor is yours. What is God saying? Well, I'm so glad you asked me that because there is something here I want to share with you because you came to mind um, as I was thinking about our discussion today. And that is uh, from Proverbs 11:16. And it reads, a gracious, which you are, generous woman will be honored with a splendid reputation. Then verse 24 says, generosity brings prosperity, but withholding from charity brings poverty. So I believe that because you are sowing, because you are giving, it is going to come back to you far more in many, many ways that you haven't even considered yet. But I will say this, every time we step out into a new arena, particularly when it's to do good, it doesn't come without opposition. Yeah. It comes from many quarters. And my pearl of wisdom, which is the title of my latest devotional that I would like to sow into your life, is no matter what assails you, stay with your focus, stay true to your calling, stay true to God. Remember that you never have to stand back for anybody. And by that, I mean, you never have to apologize for what God has called you to do. Many other people might not understand it. That's their situation, not yours. Your wow. calling your commitment is to do, to stick, to stand, to stay with what it is that you are holding in your hand. Remember that God 
said to Moses, what are you holding in your hand? That rod would have been just a rod if Moses didn't stretch it forth. If he didn't throw it down, it wouldn't have turned into a serpent. If he didn't stretch it forth, the yes. sea wouldn't have parted. And so you're taking your rod and you're stretching it forth. And there might be lots of rumbling and there might be lots of chaos around you. But just remember that God has put this in your hand and you need to be faithful to see it through. Because when you're faithful to what you're holding in your hand that comes from God, he will bless it and he will add grace to it and favor and abundance and riches mm -hmm. because that's what we need to fund these projects. Yeah. We need riches. And, you know, God is the author of riches. So we don't need to make an apology for the blessing that God brings through our hands. And so as you held up that box, I thought, there's Moses with the rod <laughs> in your hands. And so every one of us are holding something in our hands. And we've got to take what it is that we're holding. We've got to lift it up before God and say, Lord, this is what is in my hands. What would you have me do with it? You see, if we live like this, there's not much we can do. But when we live like that, the world is your oyster. And God will see to it that his will is done. And we really are living in a time that I'm very excited about because there's lots of shaking going on. But we truly are in a time where we're going to see God's kingdom come on earth and his will be done through women just like you. I really honor God in you. And you know my favorite saying is namaste, the greatness within me greets yes. greatness within you and I love the greatness that I see in you Nishani you're just one amazing woman oh thank you thank you so much Angelique that really really means a lot to us and um, what what great words of wisdom and what great words of um, enrichment it feels like I've just been seeded and and encouraged and lifted up on your shoulders so thank you so much um, for your time for your generosity, for your pearls of wisdom. I just want to say also that um, if you're listening, Facebook family, that um, during this lockdown, one of my passions is food. And during this lockdown, I was able to put together and publish an ebook, um, which is available to you as a gift. Um, if you can just um, look on my link, I will then publish the link on that. And um, it will be wonderful for you to receive that. And the, the title of the book is called Abundance, but it's titled A Bun Dance. So I'm hoping you're going to get your buns to the kitchen and dance through this pandemic and laugh, laugh like you've never laughed before and find joy even in the midst of all of this pandemic, because that in itself, to dare to dream, to dare to hope, that in itself is warfare. Mm -hmm. So um, on that note, Angelique, is there anything else that you would like to say before we end our, our chat? Sure, I'd like to invite uh, your Facebook family and everybody that is joining us to please go onto my website, angeliquedetoy.co.za, because they're in the spirit of abundance, there is free podcasts, there are free resources, everything is downloadable. And um, it's all there uh, to give people a greater purpose, a greater passion, and greater levels of productivity. And it's just as simple as putting it uh, in their mailbox, and it will be delivered to them. But thank oh, you, that is Johnny. Thank you. It's been wonderful. <laughs> that, that is really, really generous of you. Um, there are a couple of questions that are coming up on the Facebook Live. I mean, Judy wants to know, uh, what books do you read? So I'm going to squeeze that question in before we say goodbye. Oh, gosh. What? <laughs> Beside the dictionary. Beside the dictionary. Fortunately, I left the dictionary some years ago. But um, I am a great reader of, of um, Christian teaching books that really... Yes get me to think in a different di a different dimension and a different 
level, um, even to what I write. So uh, I'm very inspired by the likes of Bill Johnson. Um, I'm very connected with Glory of Zion in America, Dr. Chuck Pearson. So I, I'm an avid reader. I think I have probably got, I don't know how many books open on my Kindle and I read a bit of this and I read a bit of that. Um, but of course the final authority in my life is the Bible because that is the truth that never fails. Oh, thank you. Thank you, Angelique. And as we bring this um, conversation to a close, I want to say a very great, um, it's, it's Women's Day weekend. So to all the women out there, we just want to say from Succeed and from Angelique, a very happy Women's Day weekend. Um, I hope you get to put your feet up. I hope this hour has been engaging and a blessing. And I, I pray that we've, we've deposited some seeds of hope into your life. I also just want to say a great big thank you to Richard, um, because without him, this would not have been possible at all. I, I'm not good at everything, um, especially technology. And, um, you know, he just jumped in and six, even at 6 p.m. this evening, there was a phone call to pray and to bless me and to bless the show. So to all the great men out there, thank you. Thank you for what you do. Thank you for sowing into our lives so that we can shine. Uh, we truly love and appreciate you. Thank you, Angelique. Thanks so much, Nishani. Appreciate you. Goodbye. Goodbye.